Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It is the first Thursday of the month, which means we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence. With summer here, we're all out and about and perhaps looking to shed a few pounds. So today, we'll be eating light. Our chefs are here with some of their favorite locale recipes, and they are Carolyn Peake from Williamstown, along with Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis from South Hero. Now, before we delve into their recipes, we want to congratulate Susan Peranto from Corinth, Vermont. She's the lucky winner of our free drawing for cooking with children cookbook. Congratulations, Susan. You'll be getting your cookbook in the mail soon. Now this month, one of you lucky viewers will win a boat ride on beautiful Paradise Bay in South Hero, and Lynn Jarvis will serve a light lunch on board. I'll let you know how you can enter our free drawing at the end of the show. Now, it sounds like fun, Deb. Yes, I think it does sound like fun. Now you're up first, so where are we starting? We are going to start with a baked ziti casserole. Mm, all right, well, I'll let you get to it. All right then. And we've got a couple of little tweaks here to make it healthy and low fat for you. And I think summertime cooking sort of lends itself well to low fat because you've got all sorts of yummy farm fresh fruits and vegetables to take advantage of. So if you're craving pasta, go ahead and try this baked ziti casserole. And I'm just gonna spoon one out here so you can look at it. You'll notice that I use rotini in this recipe. You could also use penne. Either will work just fine. So what you do is you cook your pasta until it's just about tender, drain it, set it aside, and you're going to add a few healthy ingredients to this. You're going to substitute ground turkey instead of the traditional ground beef. You're going to boost the flavor by adding onion and garlic basil and oregano. You're gonna bind it with some healthy spinach and instead of using the heavy calorie ricotta cheese, try binding it with a combination of eggs and egg whites. And of course, you've got yummy spinach in here, low fat mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. You're going to press it into muffin tins. About a half a cup will fill a muffin tin. Bake it for about 20 minutes, take it out, Cover it with some more cheese, and in about 10 minutes, it's done. And you can see you've got perfectly packaged portions here of this baked ziti dish. And I love pasta, so this is one of my summertime favorites. Now, everyone likes salads. I tend to put a lot of dressing on my salad, so that kind of negates how healthy it is. So let's take a look here at this green bean and tomato salad. Green beans and tomatoes paired have a wonderful flavor. You're going to steam your green beans until they're tender, and then you're going to toss them in a mixture of chopped fresh dill, some olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper to taste, and then add some fresh tomato wedges. And doesn't this look just yummy to go alongside your pasta dish? So this is going to be another favorite dish. This is easy to prepare. It's wonderful to pack and take, so this would make a great thing to bring on a summer picnic. Now, desserts do not need to be high in calories or fat to be satisfying. So let's talk about a couple of these dessert recipes that I brought in. We'll just put them on the tray right here. So I like chocolate. So let's talk about these low fat chocolate brownies. They're extra rich and fudgy because you use both baking cocoa and dark chocolate. There's reduced amounts of butter and sugar. You use low fat milk and again, a combination of eggs and egg whites. You bake this in an eight inch square pan for about 20 minutes. Let them cool, and you've got this wonderful lower calorie brownie, just perfect for a chocolate craving. Now, the other dessert recipe I have is from a viewer in Moortown, Vermont, Nancy Rivers. She shares her mother-in-law's recipe for summer fruit cake. Using only two tablespoons of shortening and a cup of sugar, it's a lot lower in calories and fat than many other cake recipes. There's a wonderful flavor in it from cut up sweet cherries, 
golden raisins and chopped walnuts. You add some lemon extract to the batter and that gives a wonderful citrus tang. Now this recipe makes a nine by five loaf or it makes three smaller ones. Um, you'll notice I've only got two here. The other one was used in the Plumley Test Kitchen and it is yummy good. When the cakes are cool, you can frost it with a little bit of confectionery sugar glaze, also with some lemon extract. And I just wanna say hello to a couple of loyal viewers in Wells, Vermont, Donna and Leona, thank you so much for your kind comments. And Carolyn, Yes. I'm going to turn it over to you, and I bet everything you brought is going to be just as yummy as it looks. Well, I'm going to swipe one of those brownies. So. Well, I'll <laughs> save one for you. <laughs> well, I have several items here today, and I'm going to start off with kind of breakfast, dessert. You could do whatever you want on this. This is called a berry oatmeal bake, and you make an oatmeal base for it, and you put, then you layer on top berries, um, mixed berries. You could probably use just about anything that you wanted to for berries. You bake it, and when it's done, you take it out and you serve it with a little bit of yogurt. And you've got a really nice, either a breakfast thing or dessert thing, whatever you want to make it. My next one is lemon cranberry muffins. Now. It's awfully hard to find cranberries frozen, fresh, or any other way this time of year. So I said, well, what have I got in my freezer? I've got raspberries. So I put raspberries into it, and you will see that you have a nice raspberry-filled muffin. And I like to put plenty of fruit into my muffins anyway, so that was good. Next, I have a skinny crustless quiche. Now try saying that one three times fast. This is just, you don't make a crust for it at all. You just put the, the egg and milk and you know the, the custardy type thing, not real custard, but custardy type. It's made with cottage cheese and uh, liquid egg whites. So you've cut way down on the fat. Uh, it's got broccoli. It's got chopped ham and reduced fat sharp cheddar cheese. So you've got this really, really nice loaded quiche. I suppose you could have it for breakfast if you want, but you could have it for any meal that you came across. I have kind of a, an unusual one now. This is turkey veggie meatloaf cups. You use ground turkey, and then it has zucchini, uh, red pepper, uncooked couscous, Worcestershire sauce, Dijon mustard, and you put them into muffin cups, let them bake, put some uh, barbecue sauce on them, and these are really good. Now, my husband doesn't agree with me because he doesn't care for barbecue sauce, but I like them. And last of all, I have, I'm gonna hand this over to Lynn. He's right there, you can get that out of the way. Cause I need to bring this one over. This is my viewer recipe. This is from Doris Morin from Eden, Vermont. And it's a rice and pork casserole. You put the rice on the bottom, then you put pork chops on top of that. And then you use a can of cream of mushroom soup and a can of um, French onion soup, you just pour the soups over the, the meat and the rice, and you put uh, two cans of water in on top of it, put it in the oven for two hours, and you want it covered when you cook it, but it's something that you can just walk off and leave it. So. Sounds good to me. Yes. Especially this summer, we don't want to be in the kitchen all the time. Exactly. Let the kitchen get hot on its own, and you go out and enjoy the outdoors. Well, thank you very much, Carolyn. And before I show my recipes, I want to thank some of you loyal viewers who let us know how much you enjoy our recipes here in the kitchen with Across the Fence. From down in Danby, Anne-Marie Hojan, John Brandt, Brookfield, Jean McPhee, and Barnett, 
from St. Albans, Rosalie Teague, Meg Dempsey, Moore's Fork, New York. And again from Danby, Lynn Biankowski, Catherine Gross from Essex Junction, and Diane Benwarin. Be assured all of your cards and notes are read and much appreciated. Now I'm gonna move down here a little bit to start our recipes. And now that summer is here, we don't think so much about comfort food, so eating light is a great option. And I'm going to begin with this quick chicken stir fry with 185 calories per serving. And the secret to this, and to make it in less than 30 minutes, is that you buy a package or a, one of those roti rotisserie chickens that you get in the grocery store. And with the chicken, you mix a package of stir fry vegetables, chicken broth, brown sugar and spices, and after 10 or 15 minutes, it's warmed up, you wanna serve it over rice, like you see here. And this is just nutritious, delicious, and not many calories, quick and easy, and with these lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, this is just the kind of recipe that you want. Now, to accompany this, I have one of my favorite side dishes that's good for any time of year, and it's a vegetable side dish, and the prep time is just 10 minutes, but you put it in the crock pot for three hours. So you don't have to heat up the kitchen. Again, as we say, it's nice to not get that stove going. It's my corn and broccoli in a cheese sauce. It uses a package of frozen corn, frozen broccoli, and cream of chicken soup. And there's about 148 calories in here. And for a little variety, you could add some chopped ham, but be aware that would bring up the calorie count just a little bit. Now I'm going to move on to our viewer recipe, and this is from Virginia Lange of Sheldon, Vermont, and it's her coleslaw in a bag. Um, it's a nice compliment to any meal, especially this time of year. And along with the cabbage, there's carrots in here, peppers and onions, and the dressing is made with sour cream, mayonnaise, lemon juice, and spices. Now the recipe serves 15, but you could certainly cut this in half. Great recipe to use with your children or grandchildren, nephews or nieces. They like to help cut up these veggies. And then once they're in here with the, the dressing, they love to squeeze it to mix it together. And this would also be great to take to picnics because this is your a bag that you would put right in your cooler and use as your serving dish. Now I was looking at my blueberries recently and they will be ready pretty soon, believe it or not. So I decided to make this uh, blueberry dish. It's right here. It's a blueberry lemon bread. And just take a look at this. There's only 180 calories per slice. And this is not hard to make because you use low fat milk and unsweetened applesauce to reduce the calorie count, but not the, uh, not the flavor. Now I've topped it with a glaze of lemon juice and uh, con confectionery sugar, and this is great for potlucks, picnics, bake sales, or right there at home. A blueberry lemon bread, very tasty. Now I'm going to do a couple of recipes, and they're make over desserts. And the first one is right here, it's this lemon pound cake. And there's, believe it or not, there's less, there's 145 calories in here and less than a cup of sugar. The butter is replaced by low fat vanilla yogurt to slash the calories and the saturated fat. And you garnish it with a little candied lemon rinds. And that recipe will be in the handout that Judy will tell you how to get in about 20 seconds. And last but not least is this makeover coconut cream pie with 350 calories per slice. And believe it or not, that's less than half the calories of the traditional pie. That's because we're using fat-free milk, a low-fat graham cracker crust, and a cup of sugar for both the pie and the meringue, Judy, and it is yummy. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. <laughs> Nicely done. All the recipes look terrific. Thank you so much. Now, as always, we have a couple of different ways for you to get today's recipes. You can go online to the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the webpage. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 and a stamp self-addressed business size envelope to Eating Light, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. And please remember, if you're ordering the recipes by mail to include $2 and a stamp self-addressed envelope, your envelope will be used in our free drawing for the pontoon boat ride on Paradise Bay in South Hero, even if you're not ordering today. 
you can still use the address on the screen to be part of that free drawing. Just send us your name and address, and good luck to all of you. And thanks to all of our chefs today. They'll be back in the kitchen with Across the Fence on Thursday, August 4th, featuring recipes that use locally grown produce. In the meantime, all of us here at Across the Fence encourage you to support local agriculture by shopping at farmers markets and roadside stands. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Thank you.